Hi everyone, welcome back. Um, we'll get started. Okay. Sorry. Okay. So, um, so we have several scriptures talking about. Um, the Lord, you know, saying, um, just like how we see the Lord saying, um, you know, do not fear, do not fear, do not fear. Like every time he comes and uh, we see that uh, the Lord says, meeting people, do not fear, okay, fear not. Similarly, we also have scriptures where he says, do not remember or, or do not dwell on the past. Now, do not remember the former things. Don't consider the things of all. Isaiah 43, right? Uh, I will do a new thing, right? I will make a road in the wilderness and deserts in the desert, uh, rivers in the desert. No, the, the Lord is saying that, hey, I'll do some new things, some impossible things, uh, which will actually change the circumstance, right? Um, so, uh, which will bring hope and healing. Right? So, we see that, right? Isaiah 61, verse 7, you know, instead of your shame, you shall have double honor. And instead of confusion, they shall rejoice in their portion. Um, therefore, in their land, they shall possess double. Everlasting joy shall be theirs, and so on, right? So we see um, the Lord reminding of uh, not holding on to the past, right? Okay. Any questions on that? So now while we see that, okay, these things are uh, the reality, it requires some amount of work from our side. Right? It requires some amount of effort from our side in order to uh, appropriate this truth and apply it. Okay, But once we apply it, we see that, okay, this truth is capable of breaking down any kind of strongholds that we might have in our minds. Right? Any kind of wrong thinking, wrong ideas, uh, in our minds are set right, right? Because our thinking is renewed. Then, if there is any kind of lie, right, apart from the truth, any kind of lie that we are believing, holding on to, the truth sets us free from that. Right? Truth gives us the discernment and sets us free from that. Right? So, so uh, this isn't something that we we ought to do. Uh, we cannot escape from it. Right? We ought to do that. Um, even as we go through life, right? Okay. Yeah. Any you have a uh, sir, uh, this I say uh, this do not remember the former things. So um, this is only applicable when we when we get the forgiveness when we repent. Only in that case, or because of we are well, since are forgiven, uh, so we should not remember. Or in that case. So don't you know bring it to memory. Don't continue to dwell on those things of the past. Let's just read that verse. Uh, thus is the Lord who makes a I'm just reading 16. Um, it says, who breaks for the chariot and the horse and the army and then, and then it goes on to do not go for the foreigners. So he's he's talking about he's not actually the context is that he's talking about people who are actually held captive and he's uh, you know he's talking about deliverance power. Now it is applicable for us. Uh, uh, this proof is applicable. Can we say, okay, God, uh, yeah, you, you are reminding me of those problems. You know, we can apply it in the sense of what has already happened, what has been done on the cross, and uh, therefore, or what, whatever things for which we have asked for forgiveness, and God has already done it, He's already you know, removed it out of the way. So do not again go back to it. So that is one way of applying it. Where it is a done thing. It's already been done. It's already been washed, cleansed. So don't revisit. Don't remind yourself. 
you know, you don't know the formulas. But the other thing is also, you know, as we go through life, maybe, you know, uh, certain things have happened. Maybe it's, it, it doesn't require forgiveness from your side, okay, uh, in the sense, uh, or, or even with taking this and asking God to forgive. These are things that have happened, uh, which have hurt us or offended us. God is saying, okay, it is, you've already dealt with it, don't go back to what it is. So that was your question. Have I already, something that I've already dealt with in terms of releasing the weakness, in terms of even repenting? Uh, so in, in that case, in that case, only it's a thing. In what case can we, answer? what other ways can we answer? Yeah, like, uh, um, these things can be when we are feeling Yeah, we can't use this to justify. That's what I'm asking. Yeah. We can't use this to justify something saying, okay, uh, yeah, I mean, Lord is not asking me to look at it. See, we deal with it and don't go back to, you know, let that past haunt you. Even as recent as whatever, maybe last week or even as recent as this day or don't go to revisit and remind yourself of it and anchor yourself to it. Don't remember it because the Lord will. Uh, but it comes from a place of having dealt with it. So if you've not dealt with it in terms of either asking forgiveness or releasing forgiveness, uh, then then there's no you know there's no point. There's no way of moving forward, right? Okay. Um, yeah, you want to ask something, yeah, Francis? Vasu, this is a like one person share an experience like this. So he went to like he's a believer. He's went to Bible college and so on. So and he went away from God. He came back. He asked for the forgiveness. Okay, so that's all. But uh, after some days, he became like he felt like guilt and all. Wherever he go, like the thoughts will come. So. But he not want to back, go back and like he now in the like prayer life everything is there but the th thoughts are disturbing him. He became very stressful. So how to talk to that people? So the thing is that see the, maybe it's because of the I don't know intensity of the deed which was done or um, thing. So so the thing is this you know the, the, so that seems to be louder or that seems to be bigger than the truth of God's forgiveness, you know. Uh, so maybe in his emotions, he's still not come out of it, you know. He's still not set free in his emotions. So, so the only way to remind, uh, only way to de deal with that is to point that person back to the truth, saying, um, you know, this is already done. There's no point in revisiting what is already done. No, already done in a sense, God has already cleansed, forgiven, healed, there's no point in going back to it again. Um, See, so you look at the life of Paul, uh, the Apostle Paul, even before he came to know Christ, he did a lot of things. He did a lot of things which were, uh, you know, he was a murderer. He, uh, you know, he put people in prison and prison those days, no sense of justice. Families were maybe separated, etc. You know, he persecuted the church in all these kind of ways. Um, and he was there when Stephen was being stoned right uh, so he's seen murder and killing up front very close so i always think you know did these things come to haunt him like, after becoming a believer but the fact is what jesus did for him you know he just accepted it so fully right um so that he could actually walk in freedom and wholeness right and just do the things he, he understood grace right so, so even for this person, you know, we just need to have an understanding of grace and saying, God, God has healed, forgiven in in His fullness. Like it's not like holding something against you. So when He does not hold, we have no right to hold it against ourselves. Like no matter what it is, no matter what it is, if God has forgiven and and forgiveness and the thing we receive by faith, right? We receive by faith in Him. Um, so, yes, there will be challenges like this, you know, sometimes. Um, but 
uh, we need to get back to god's word and say okay and and deal with it say this is under the blood of jesus this has already been dealt with so i will not you know think about it or let my present be you know affected by it yeah yeah sir so like in like in case the situation may be the influence of demonic like it doesn't want you to walk free right it can be a demonically energized uh, you know these kind of things maybe it comes like a dream maybe it comes like you know that thing so that's why we need we need to get fully healed a fully rooted in the love of god like understand god's love that it's it's uh, it's unconditional you know and when he loves us he loves us fully um not like human love um and also our identity you know we have changed and this is what has happened etc you know the thing is when a person is a unbeliever and has done something and has come okay now whatever is done uh, as an unbeliever uh, it's is easy to say okay i came to the cross i was forgiven of all my past i am a new creation now now uh, you know but as a new creation you know when you mess up right and it happens consistently you know frequently over a period of time as well, then it becomes a struggle for us but for god it's nothing <laughs> for god is nothing to forget you know it's nothing to heal and he's the same god but for me as a believer i'm thinking hey i was like that and god changed me after changing i you know I've done this would god really forgive would god really love you know as a human being i have all these reasonings but with god he's the same god his love is still the same it never changes right so yeah so that's the thing that's what we struggle with as human beings but we need to come to the truth and uh, so the thing is when we come to the truth and receive uh, you know fully that places us in a place of strength it puts us in a place of strength right uh, grace always does that so when we come so our identity our righteousness and everything places in a puts us in a place of strength where we where we can live our lives um you know our everything our thinking pattern our behavior everything is affected by that or influenced by that to live as overcomer so that's very necessary you know if uh, if i don't deal with it then it will always come back to trap me and put me in prison so yeah that's okay any other questions uh, yeah yes uh, uh, nina yeah uh pastor th these references isaiah 43 what yeah. we are looking at uh, do not remember the former things um yeah. we have so i mean we have kind of been touching on mostly on uh, wrongs that we have done and you know in the past and right, from right. which we have we need to come out mm -hmm. uh, but the uh, here the i mean god i mean in, in this particular context i'm sure of course that is definitely there that we mm -hmm. always have to come out of that yeah. but here it is talking about this is the lord this is what the lord says he who made a way through the sea a path through the mighty waters who did right. all that right forget the former thing so he's all is this, is it also that we can look at okay we can uh, we don't only need to look at the past victories also because god can do even something greater does it mean that also here uh, oh don't don't settle and look at the yeah. past victories just enough it, i mean that's not just it i mean the lord can do so many because he says if i mean after he says who drew out mm. the chariots and horses army and reinforcements mm. he's talking mm. about them mm. then it says in 18 forget the former things do not dwell because uh. i am doing a new thing it springs up do you not i'm going to make a way in the desert and streams in the wasteland right so, right so is well, that my, also yeah. I mean, yeah. apart from the negative, I'm saying. Yeah. So, the, so the thing is, if the past victory or past accomplishments, um, you know, kind of hold me back, then definitely, I think we need to, you know, not allow that to happen, right? If it's, 
the former things you know when we're looking at it even if it's a victory that is holding me back normally you know when 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 we look at former when we say former things and let's say we we are talking about victory and accomplishments and and things that actually turn out to be a testimony about the lord you know as a testament to the lord's faithfulness goodness and his power uh, in our lives then these are good things you know we we can we can always remind ourselves that um, uh, as like the like the god himself uh, you know says to joshua you know as i was with moses so i will be with you right so he's reminding himself of uh, he's actually the lord is reminding of the former things that he did in moses moses life and he's saying that as i was with moses so i will be with you uh, so when it's a testimony of god's goodness and faithfulness these are things that actually enable us to go further uh, forward right put our faith in him knowing that knowing that god who did this will do it again in my life uh, but if there is an accomplishment or something that is holding me back or that's making me complacent now i i don't know practically how this could happen but maybe i'm attributing it to my strength and uh, you know the arm of flesh rather than god um then in that case you know um it could you know i could just become complacent or i could become i could just dwell in that and that actually prevents me from you know doing other things or uh, i can't think of a practical you know uh, incident but if it helps me if it does not help me move forward then yes then really i should not consider those things yeah okay okay boss thank you yeah okay fine yeah. um anything else that you can think of okay so let's look at chapter 6 then okay 6 talks about staying emotionally whole okay so you know there will be an overlap of whatever we have studied in the past you know the the 10 steps that we looked at and the four uh steps which dealt with the lifestyle change um there will be some overlap so i'm just going to quickly go through this right so the first thing is about um so we're looking at okay how do i sustain this right uh, the lord heals me the lord delivers me now how do i you know walk in that healing or sustain that in my life Okay. so uh, which means that as a human being you know i'm going to face uh, i'm going to you know face some situations which refer to the past like francis just said you know i'm going to face some of those things or i might face some new pressures new challenges new trials which actually test you know that very thing identity like just like satan did and uh, you know are you really if you are the son you will do this you know if you are a child you will do this and are you the child and you did this you know things like that i might have to face you know you call yourself a son call yourself a minister a pastor and you're you know look at the words you spoke to your wife or you know you know things like that right so um so we need to uh, you know uh, in order to s- hold on and walk in that healing and wholeness um we need to have some um some things some spiritual disciplines uh, and uh, in our lives right so these things you know uh, first one would be to renounce the lie okay you how do we know something is a lie when we know the truth then so how do we know the truth aha <laughs> uh-huh. you know this truth you know there is truth right <laughs> you can use the mic <laughs> uh so the thing is uh, okay truth uh, we know what truth is uh, because it, it's defined by god okay, because defined by jesus because he says i am the way the truth and the life so jesus is the truth and jesus defines what truth is he is a reference point for us for truth okay so you can always go with the word for what truth is 
um, and, and also truth goes beyond the facts of life, right? In the sense, uh, that's the thing, huh? um, because we, the facts can say, okay, this far and no further, but truth takes us higher. Uh, it, it is supernatural. So what is even restrictions to the natural truth takes us beyond that, right? So that's the thing. Um, okay. So anyway, so truth, uh, uh, we, we would be able to identify truth when we have uh, God's word as the reference point, God's standards as the reference point. Okay. Uh, and uh, so which means that's why scripture talks about, okay, let there be a rich deposit of uh, the word of Christ in your heart, right? Um, and then there'll be an overflow of that. So the truth of God's word. So uh, also uh, the Holy Spirit enables us, he will lead us into all truth. Jesus said, this is one of the things that the Holy Spirit does, that he will lead you into all truth progressively, right? He's the teacher, he's the guide, he's the counselor, he will lead us into all truth. This means that it's a it's a journey, ongoing journey of being led into the truth, right? So, so the Satan does exactly opposite of that. Satan is called the father or the author of lies, okay? And lies can be very deceptive, especially when it's half truth, right? Um, so when it's when truth is mixed with lie, then it always becomes very, very difficult. So that is why we need, um, you know, we need the Holy Spirit uh, and we have God's Spirit in us to discern the lie and then teach, you know, to, to show us what the truth is. Okay. Um, so let's look at the words of the Lord. Romans chapter 8, 31 and 32. Okay. So Romans 8, 31 says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, so which means, you know, these uh, Jewish people, they came to the Lord. So he's telling them, if you abide in my true word, you are my disciples indeed. Okay, so which means you're going to stay with the word, stay with my teaching, stay with my instruction. If you abide in the word, uh, you are my disciples indeed. Okay, verse 32, and you shall know the truth. So when you abide in the word, you're going to know the truth, okay, what the truth is. And look at that last part, and the truth shall make you free. Okay, so lie has a way of imprisoning. Lie has a way of constraining, restricting. Right, but truth has a way of liberating us, right, uh, and releasing us into freedom. Okay, so uh, so that's the thing. So walking with Jesus, walking with Jesus, where we are abiding in His Word, is a way where we constantly. Uh, can be discerning the lies. Okay, so renouncing the lies would be uh, discerning the truth and the discerning what the lie is. Uh, so we need to once we know that something is a lie, uh, don't don't let it deal with you. I mean, don't let it dwell with you. Let the truth dwell. Let not the lie stay there. Okay, so it can be in very very many forms. You know. It can be about ourselves, it can be about God, it can be about the neighbor, it can be about your future, right? So when you know that, hey, this thing does not have any basis, this does not have any scriptural basis, okay, it's, it's you know, then you know, it might be, it might look so big, but it still does not have a scriptural, it's like a one big balloon, it might be blown so much, right? It might be, it looks so big, it's even, you know, the balloon is so big that it's, uh, you know, you can't see beyond the balloon. It's so big. But still, the truth of God's word, it's like that, you know, whatever you prick that balloon, there is a pin, then it goes. You know, then you realize, oh, it was it was a smoke screen. It was something that was blocking. But it had no weightage, right? It had um, it, it had no, no solid quality to it because it was a lie, right? So that's the thing. Um, so the Spirit of God is in us, the anointing we have received. Uh, 1 John chapter 2, verse 20, 27 especially, you know, it says, the anointing which you have received from Him abides in you, that you do not need anyone to teach you, okay? So here, you know, the, the, the this is the thing, you know, teach what? Okay, so he's actually specifically talking about discerning, 
the false teacher or the antichrist right so he's saying you do not need anyone to teach you but the same anointing teaches you concerning all things and is true it's not a lie and just as it has taught you you will abide in him when you read through you know 1 john 2 in context you realize that he was talking about discerning what is false and what is of the truth okay so renounce the lie that means that means how do you how do you how would you renou renounce the lie how would you renounce it sorry by speaking it you you tell yourself you know this is a lie Okay, you tell yourself, this is a lie. I'm not going to think on these lines anymore. You know, it might it might be so attractive. It might be so, uh, I don't know. So it, it might seem like your own thought. But you decide saying, okay, this is a lie. I renounce it. I push it aside. I'm not going to en entertain this line of thinking. I'm not going to entertain this discussion. This is a lie. I renounce it. Okay. I'm not going to act on it. That's how we renounce it, right? I'm not going to act on this suggestion. I'm not going to act on this invitation. It's a lie. So I, you know, the door is closed. Okay. And be very clinical about it, right? Clinical, you know, very surgical and saying, okay, I cut it off. Okay. So then you realize that the lie loses its power. The more we reason, the more we entertain, that is when we realize that, hey, it's, it's gaining in power. Right? How James talks about that, right? Uh, that whole pattern of falling into temptation, right? Uh, there is this whole thing of, uh, let, maybe we can just very quickly look into that. Okay, James chapter uh, 1, right? Okay, it says, um, verse 14, each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own desires and enticed. Okay, so there is enticed, that word is snare or trapped. Um, so he's drawn away by his own desires, which means that he has actually thought about it and he maybe he's reasoned with it. He's drawn away and he's enticed. Okay, and when desire is conceived, it gives uh, birth to sin, and desire and sin, when it's full grown, brings forth death. Okay, so, so that's the thing. So we are drawn away by our desires. There is some time where we are, we are, you know, when we have our reasoning and analyzing and considering, which is fine. But when you know that something is not of the truth, we have to renounce it. Okay. The second thing is to speak blessing and cancel curses. Okay. So we speak blessing uh, over ourselves. We speak blessing over the ones even. Uh, over, over those who have wronged us. Okay, speak the blessing of God. Speak the promises of God. Right? Speak the word of God, and uh, pronounce that blessing. Okay, um, cancel every curse. You know, I recently had a very interesting conversation with a couple, and uh, so that person, they both of them are, you know, they just uh, want to really very passionate about God, want to see God's power in their lives, and want to see God's transformative power in their own lives, and through them, right? So, so much so, they've been praying about certain things, okay? So, suppose they somebody has told anything negative, okay? Which is contrary to God's promise. So, the husband comes and tells the wife, you know, I'm going to tell you something, but uh, you reject it in God's name, okay? You reject it in Jesus' name. Uh, this is what you know, I'm going to tell you. So, that person says, okay, you know, I, I was having this conversation, and this person said that, uh, you know, what we are doing, etc. You know that will that will never happen. That opportunity will never uh, come. That opportunity will never highly unlikely. Uh, we don't have any chance of you know maybe going to this place or doing this. Okay. Then the wife says, "I reject it in Jesus." <laughs> He's actually passing out that information, whatever someone has told. But even in that, you know, the spouse is rejecting. You know, they've worked out a strategy. Okay, we are not going to entertain anything that is not of god or you know so i'm going to cancel you know every everything that was pronounced you know as a curse you know as a negative blessing uh, i'm going to cancel that okay so so which means that uh, when it comes to canceling curses uh, when you're speaking blessing we understand right we we declare canceling curses we we do the same thing we just cancel those pronouncements that were made over us 
like for example when i was growing up my grandfather uh, that is my father's father he always said hey, don't give good you know if it means okay carrying some plates and putting it on the table we used to meet in their house every afternoon every sunday afternoon for lunch so they'll he'll say hey don't give this guy you know these glass glass tumblers or glass uh, you know the plates you know he he is butterfing us he will always drop it he'll break it so don't give it to him so i believe that about myself <laughs> and i and i'll say okay don't give it to me i'll 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 break it as i'm growing up then uh, i think it was my mother who said no 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 you'll you can you'll be fine just go do it don't say it. you can't you can so i had to tell myself hey i i'm actually careful so i will not take up any you know other big responsibilities uh, like that because what if i fail what if i drop it what if i break it right so i had to tell myself like no 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 i can right so i had to cancel those negative things that were spoken over me so maybe some things were spoken over our lives right uh, and it does not have any it does not have its root in truth right yeah yeah no, you have a question Uh, canceling this all the curses so uh, like when jesus christ died on the cross for us are they not canceled on that time or do we have to speak it again sorry the thing is this so he took our sin and the consequence of sin on the cross uh, but still we how did we enter into life yeah, by believing by receiving and uh, you know every time we we did sin we go back and we repent of it and we renounce it yeah yeah so so the thing is oh okay so the, which means that every curse he has taken upon himself okay everything every negative blessing every curse he has taken upon so that's that is cancelled Uh, in the sense in jesus name but you know for some reason if we still see an outworking of it if you see symptoms of it right for whatever reason we don't know okay the good thing to do is to cancel it you know to say that um, you know i reject it it will not have anything to do with me you know it ends at the cross it is under the blood so i cancel it so that's the thing so so what what we are doing is actually saying this is what happened on the cross you're going back to that and so it stops it does not have any power you're reaffirming the truth that's it that's it yeah there any way like uh, after the after they become the believers the people who are believers also uh, what we what we can I um, mean, how we have to consider if these curses are working in their lives from generation. I mean, how we how we have to take this and how we. No, 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 no. One family asked me about their family. They are my relatives only. So it it was it was there from their forefathers, like in their family, one person used to die. so from the generation in their grandfather one dad and their father and their uh, sister so he have a family now so he's asking what if if something happens now in my generation because they were believers only but but what what they used to tell is because of the sin that my grandfather did it came on to father so he died and his father also used to have some uh, illegal i mean things doing and it came came on her sister came on his sister her sister died in the same position and then now he was asking what if no he have a family he have two kids so i i, I mean we, we we believe that every everything i mean all the sins and curses were taken in the cross but they are believers only but how we can i don't know it's because of the curse or somehow it's happened but it's happened right. from the generation so the some doorway or some some legal access right so so the thing is this you know um so 
like i don't know about the pa- past we can't really assume okay something he did wrong she did wrong we can't say right uh, and it's it's not right for us to uh, think so the only thing that uh, this person needs to do is to be strong in the truth okay that see if if there is fear if there is fear then it brings uh, that it places that person on very shaky ground right there is no you know the person maybe sometimes there is faith and then but if that that fear comes over and is still thinking okay will it happen will it not happen you know so the person has to be absolutely sure of what happened on the cross now and not think about how did the previous previous deaths happen right uh, because there are too many factors too many factors yes generations they did but this is the truth that we have been set free from the empty ways of our forefathers and uh, every curse has been dealt with every curse that we see Deuteronomy 28 verses 15 onwards till the end of the chapter it's you know it covers every curse i think very exhaustive list maybe that person can do, go there and say okay christ carried this on the cross for me it has no it will have no effect on my life okay and i close that doorway whatever doorway was clo- opened i close it in jesus name satan has no legal access and by the blood of jesus every doorway is closed you know and and be strong about it in faith you know be be absolutely aggressive in faith about it because this is what has happened and this is his inheritance long life is his inheritance right to fulfill the plan and purpose of god is god's will and desire so to be absolutely sure of god's wish and desire for him as a believer right now we don't know whether the previous generation did that or not we don't know and there's no point in just visiting going there right what they did right what they did wrong but this person can be absolutely grounded in the truth and be sure of it and exercise his authority and say you know this is i will walk in confidence i will walk in faith i will not give in to fear because fear is an open doorway It doesn't come from god yeah and this uh, another thing like is there any possibility that uh, like um, because of of not knowing the identity who we are in christ and what jesus did for us in for us in the cross because of not knowing all these things is there any possibility that these things to enter in our life like satan tries to hit the truth every time because i mean he want us to not to know uh, the authority what we got is there any possibility like for the believers also because of not knowing what they what they capable of and what yeah. they are in is there any possibility for continuation of these curses or any So the beautiful thing is that um, you know the Lord, uh, you know, has called us to an intimate relationship with Him, right? And in that intimacy, in that walk with God, He will He brings about a revelation, right, about Himself, about uh, about us, and so on. Okay, so this lack of information or this lack of revelation about my own authority and all the inheritance that I have at my disposal. yes it places us at an as an advantage but if i am actively seeking the lord seeking the heart of god the lord will reveal like you know all this it, it you know it's it's from a place of intimacy it's from a place of walk with the with the lord that we have this and it's all there in scripture right so which means a person reads it and then says hey that's me you know second corinthians 5:17 okay i see it and then i say okay that's me it's just that um uh, the person has to really you know stake it and then make it part of their lives and apply it in their lives so so that's not. so lack of information lack of revelation does place us in you know in that thing but but the, that that is why the grace of god covers right the grace of god covers and god also takes us to a place of knowledge and understanding even as we grow in the knowledge grow in the understanding of it that we make sure that we don't forget it parable of, parable of the sower the word comes but because of persecution we release it you know we, we don't hold on to it because of 
the difficulty right uh, or because of the cares of the world you know the cares of the world lust for other things uh, you know worries choke the world it says so um, god is constantly speaking giving revelation understanding but uh, you know yeah so the short answer is yeah it could be because of me me not walking in the revelation that he is uh, you know giving me and revelation is possible when we walk in when you journey with him all the time yeah that's all speaking out blessings and cancelling this all curses through our words what we can say like it's it's because of we to remember things and we should not forget these things that's why we are speaking out this this and all or there is any other so every time we say speak it out speak it out yeah. declare it so so the, the, the what we see when we especially when we learn about faith and what we see is that um, the lord has actually put in a principle of speaking what you believe right what you believe in your heart to actually declare that speak that out and there is what is called a heart mind ear connection <laughs> like an ent you know ear nose throat something that infects infects the whole thing you know you feel some itchiness and then affects your hearing and all that so yeah there is that connection heart mind throat i mean voice connection which um this is which is why uh, the lord says you know mark 11 23 says have faith in god and then he goes on to talk up say talk about okay this is the outworking of your faith that you will speak to that mountain because of your faith in him so there is this principle of declaring speaking and uh, even the what the spirit of um, so the, sorry the sword of the spirit being the rema word of god you know the which is which is again how do you use it of course i think about it i meditate on it but i also speak it out um yeah so that's uh, yeah um sorry sorry can same death patterns death pattern can be of course or same like same circle in uh, generation like what previous uh, our forefather generation dealt with is is the same if we are also going through is it because of the curses same difficulty same kind of thing. like same challenges or same, challenges. same financial losses mm -hmm. see most of these patterns are because uh it could be also because of learned ex learned uh, what do you call uh, yeah so we like for example uh, no we we kind of learn those things from our from the previous generation it's a learned habit okay like for example how do i how do i treat the women in the house okay maybe the you know the the men folk of the previous generation they this is how they dealt so it's it's not i learned this and it became a habit nobody taught me saying okay this is how you need to do it but i observed and i learned it and i'm passing it on you know i'm i'm behaving the same way right so um so it could be and also maybe spending patterns financially you know this is how it was and i saw that and uh, maybe i didn't even think too much about it but i learned it myself right so i started living that way and so you know so it need, need not be a very deeply spiritual thing but it can even be learned behavior just by observing and you know uh like for example like if if uh, the parents don't have a great marriage let's say there's always conflict at home always this thing so the child comes to certain conclusions right about marriage and it's like that it's just a thing that i abs uh, absorb in life and i pass it on you know or i make some decision i'll never you know, things like that right so it could be that also ah so specifically about the manner in which they die okay so one two things one uh, we also know that um, genetically certain things are passed on okay so uh, maybe they are uh, prone to certain kinds of diseases 
and it's because it's been passed on. But there's something that is greater than that, which can break that, which is the, yeah, which is the, you know, uh, uh, the blood of Jesus and what he has done for us on the cross. So, so the thing is, it can end there. It need not affect you. It, you need not pass on to the next generation. So, it, so that's how it is. So, so what are we doing about it, right? So that's, that's the thing. Like, the people might say, okay, that person passed off like that. The grandfather, grandfather passed on, and then the thing. So, uh, it's as if you know that's expected. The assumption is that yeah, this, this will carry on, but you don't have to. You can say no. It stops. It stops here. It doesn't affect me. Because I'm a recipient of, you know. So you know, maybe the other other thing is like like Ananda asked, okay, what if they were all believers, you know, did didn't they have access to the truth? Didn't they live it out like that? So I don't know. You know, I don't know how they dealt with it, but as far as me and this generation goes, this is what I can do. I can decide. Now that I have the truth, now that I have the revelation. I choose to walk in the authority of it and the reality of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, so we, you know, as as people, we need to be careful. What are we speaking? What are we declaring over our, you know, our family, our us, over ourselves, and so on. And uh, and change that, right? Um, yeah. Okay. Third one is guarding against negative emotions. Okay. Um, I think we'll we'll stop here with this. Guarding against negative emotions. Okay. So um, see, emotions are part and parcel of life. Okay. So emotions are, um, uh, uh, let's say, our response to what we experience. What we hear, what we see. Okay, we laugh, we feel happy, uh, maybe we smile. It's in response to something that we have experienced. Something maybe it's a trigger in our mind, and something that we think about, uh, and it's an you know we feel that emotion. It could be it could be happiness, it could be sadness, etc. Okay, but when it's negative emotion, uh, and if it's going to be part of our life over a period of time. Okay, um, so we know that negative emotions can happen as a trigger. Okay, uh, and in fact, it need not be a uh, it need not be a bad thing in the sense you there is a sense of it. It shows you that maybe there is a sense of injustice. You know, you feel anger, you feel um, you know um, some kind of uh, you know uh, anger because something did not go right. You did all the right things, um, and then this person, you know. Uh, so it, it just shows you that justice was not done. There's injustice. So because of which we feel we feel anger. Okay. Now, is that good or bad? What do you think? This anger. Uh, holy, holy anger, righteous anger, which is coming because of something that didn't go well, that didn't go right. Okay, it's a, it's a sense of uh, it's a, so it it shows you that there's injustice. Okay, so you feel that, but what do you do with it? <laughs> so so that that's the thing. So what do you do with that emotion? Right, because it's an emotion. It shows you something. It's an indicator, right? Something is not right. But what do you do with that emotion? Do I throw the plate, you know, at the person, or yeah, that's the thing, right? So my action in response to that emotion matters, and do I continue to harbor that emotion? That's the thing, you know, because Ephesians four talks about. Anger, right? I think we've read that verse many times. Ephesians 4. Okay. It says, verse 26 Be angry and do not sin. Do not let the sun go down on your anger, on your wrath. 
okay so it's indicated it shows you something is not right but let it be an indicator to show you fine something is not right but don't sin because of that and don't let the sun go down on your wrath so what does that show us time okay deal with it yeah so we don't have to say okay i have to wait till sundown <laughs> you know it's just to, to show us that you be prompt about dealing with it right okay um okay we'll stop here and then we'll continue i guess we'll again touch upon this guarding against negative emotions right okay okay thank you god bless bye bye